short little core strengthening sequence from Yoga Within. For the core work, you may need one or two blankets, one or two blocks, and one strap. I'll demonstrate all of these core practices without the props, but I'll also be using them myself uh, so that you can see how it goes. All right, so let's get started. The usual gentle way I like to start with core work is by placing a little bit of height. And in my case, I think today I'm gonna actually use two blankets. It's a little bit like a bolster, and it allows me to protect my low back from strain. So we'll begin by laying your sacrum, your tailbone and your sacrum on your bolster or your blankets, and then placing your head and shoulders on the mat. The idea here is that your torso is slanted backwards and downwards, not arching over the blanket, but there's a slight uplift to your tailbone, which protects your low back from strain. For many people, it's quite helpful. Now, you can do this with the block or without the block. And I often will take the block and put it right between the upper thigh bones. The arms can go in a diamond shape around your head, cactus arms, straight out to the sides. Though most of the time with this kind of leg work that's designed to strengthen your core, I find it helpful for the arms to be reaching anywhere in the sphere of the head and shoulders to counterbalance the weight of the legs. It's a little bit easier on the neck and shoulder area. So, as we squeeze your block, or squeeze your legs together, if you're not using a block, we'll begin to slowly lower and lift your knees and lightly tap the mat. So some of you have done this 50 bazillion times with me, and for others this might be a little bit new. But the idea is that it's a very slow, controlled movement. No swinging, no momentum. The neck is soft, you can even slip your hand behind your neck, give yourself a little massage, relax your face, and see if all the work can take place from the rib cage downward, rather than up in the neck and shoulders. You can see that the arms have a lot of freedom of movement, so that's fine if you prefer a different position for your arms. As I slowly lower and lift my feet, I'm lightly tapping my toes, I lightly tap my heels, all the while squeezing the block so that I can engage these deep abdominals, transverse abdominus being the, the one that really gets engaged when you squeeze your inner thighs together, either with or without the block. Now for some, this is all well and good, but relatively easy. So if you would like more intensity, you can create that by elongating your legs, either partially by straightening the knees a bit, and in this case, I wouldn't really touch the floor because the longer lever arm of the legs would start to strain my back a little bit. So I just bring my legs to a hovering position as I squeeze the block still or squeeze the legs together if you're not using a block. And finally, for some, it will actually feel quite reasonable to do this with straight knees, but for many, the knees don't straighten all the way. So don't worry about that. It's totally fine if they don't straighten but do energetically either flex or point your feet. I prefer flexion because it's just a little bit more obvious how that should go and the stability of it feels right to my feet, but you can point your toes just as well. We just don't want limp feet, no dead fish at the end of your legs, yeah? So squeeze in your block. When the going gets a little tougher, I tend to exaggerate the exhalation uh, during the lowering of the legs and then allow the inhalation mostly to occur on the slightly lesser intensity movement, that being the leg lift. Yeah? So inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower. Now finally, you can always go back to toe touches, right? With the knees quite bent, you do not need to do this double leg thing. You can even take away your block and go into alternating toe touches. This one still asks you to engage your core, but it gives you the option to do it in a much more gentle and controlled way. You're still working those abdominal muscles. So be very attentive to sensation in your back, your neck, your torso in general. So if finally you'd like the most intensity, you can hover your legs 
And I like to circle the ankles here, maybe even reach your arms as if holding that beach ball behind your head, over the top of your head, squeezing, breathing, relaxing your face. <sighs> Pretend you're floating on an air mattress on a big lake in the sun. La -di -da. <sighs> squeezing, squeezing. <sighs> and then we'll gently pull those knees into the chest. Either keep your block or let it go. Stretch your arms wide like a letter T and gently bring your knees from side to side. And then as we did in the previous videos, we want to make sure that you don't tip too far and stress out your shoulder. For some, it'll feel good to tip way over, even so that that trailing shoulder lifts. And for others, it'll feel much better if you keep the shoulders grounded and only twist so much that both shoulder blades stay on the mat. Couple breaths here. Breathing deeply in, deeply out. Deeply in, deeply out. Now this time when we twist to the left, I'll readjust my block to keep it in place, I'll twist to the left and then extend my top leg. In this case, it's my right leg. Opening up the chest, grounding the shoulders, holding the leg, maybe straight, maybe slightly bent, pushing through that top buttock bone, away from the crown of the head. Then slowly re-bend, squeeze through the middle, cinch the navel to the spine, and twist to the right. Again, any amount of twist, not overdoing it, and then bring that left leg the top leg, whichever way you went, it's the top leg, and try to push that buttock away from your head rather than letting it shorten in and cramp up this side of the body. Squeeze the block, open up the chest, relax your face. Deep breath in, and then re-bend the knees. Come on back to the center. We'll slowly plant your feet, remove your block for now. Now we'll be moving this blanket out from under, or in my case, two blankets for the moment. We lift the hips and slide it away. Bending your elbows for bridge pose. Now this bridge pose, I'm gonna put the block back between the thighs. You have the option to leave it out. We press with the elbows, bring the legs and feet a hip width distance. And if you're working without the block, you'll bring your feet right together so that you can squeeze the inner thighs together. We start by flattening your back, pressing with your elbows, and lifting your hips any amount. It might not be a high bridge. You can lift up as much as serves you. And then I like to fold the shoulder blades in towards the spine, broadening the pectorals, squeeze the block, and then we'll move the hips in a circle. Now, if this arm position is tedious for you, you prefer to reach the arms long, I often like to grab the sticking mat with my hands. And as you circle your hips forward, uh, upward, to the side, almost to the mat, but not to rest, and to the other side, making a circle with your hips. Activating your buttocks, your inner thighs, your deep abdominals, because we're squeezing the blocks or squeezing the legs together. Switch your circle direction. Feeling this in the feet, feeling this in the abdominals, the thighs, the hips, the buttocks. Not working the neck. Relax your face, relax your jaw. You can even gently tone your chin just a little bit from side to side. Then hold in the lifted position and pulse, pulse, pulse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then vertebra by vertebra, as you reach your arms up towards the ceiling, and maybe next to your ears, you can make a Y or a broad arm position if that works better for your shoulders. Then you curl down vertebra by vertebra, best you can, and then bring the knees into the chest, remove your block if you're using one, and go round and round in a circle, massaging out your back. And then we'll pause and go the other way. Deep breath in, deep exhale, and we'll plant the feet. Okay, now, this next oh, core strengthener, once again, you have the option to do it with just having your legs squeezed together. No need for the block. If you like the block, as I do, I'm obsessed with the block, as you probably already know, if you've studied with me ever, take the block between the thighs, pretty close to the pelvis, yeah, right, nice and high up at the top of the thigh. 
I like to wrap the strap around the fleshy parts of my palms, like so. You may prefer to just hold it, like handlebars on a bike. Totally fine. Now, for those of you who find that your neck is completely comfortable, you can do this with the arms like I'm showing here, straight up, directly vertical from the shoulder, arms going straight up, neither towards the knees nor towards the wall behind you, but vertically. We tuck the chin, we squeeze the block, we flatten the back. Now, for those of you for whom the neck is um, a little vulnerable, we'll hold and breathe here and don't lift your shoulders at all. Just squeeze your block, flatten your back, pull on the strap, and tuck the chin. Now, for those of you who'd like to go further, I'll show the option with the neck not being supported, and then I'll show a neck supported option. We scoop the belly down, we tuck the chin, we lift the shoulders up, and breathe. For, for some people, pulsing is a nice way to work. I find I prefer, if I do pulse, it's very slow ones. Notice the temptation to bring your strap forward towards your knees. Try to keep it straight vertical. And also, notice the temptation to lift your chin up. Instead, tuck your chin. Let your neck and head ride on the shoulders, curling in, not pulling the head, just letting it sit there, relaxing your jaw. Now, for some, it's better to take that strap and take it behind the back of your head right where your baseball cap would sit. Then you pull the strap straight up to the ceiling, but drop your head so you're looking at the ceiling behind you, not towards your knees. This is a neutral position for the neck and head as best you can manage it. Not 100% neutral, but you're working in that direction. When you lift your shoulders, you pull the strap so much that your head can really fall into the strap. You lift the shoulders, drop the head, lift the shoulders, drop the head, continually dropping the head over and over again into your strap. Breathing, lifting, flattening your back. Good, four more, four breaths. Four, three, two, and one. And come all the way down. You can keep your strap and keep your block. Reach through the arms. Breathe as you cinch your navel to your spine. Spin your heels into the sticky mat. Turn your knees and toes to the ceiling. And get long through your torso. Big belly breath. <sighs> exhale one more time. Big belly breath in. And exhale. <sighs> Let everything go slack. Okay. The next variation. What we'll do is we'll take the block. We'll take, in fact, take two blocks. We'll place one flat and turn the other one crosswise so that I have the option to put my feet around the block like so, okay? Then I lay myself back down. My strap is somewhere handy. Yes, I can use it. And what I'm going to do first is flatten out my back best I can and then slowly reach for the shins and pull the heels into the buttocks until into the pelvis, until my back is flat. So here I'm holding the legs, squeezing the block, and flattening my back, broadening the chest. I can stay here. This is a, a core strengthener by virtue of the squeeze of the block, the flattening of the back. My abs are engaging strongly here. If I want more intensity, I can let go of the arms and let them either rest on the floor and move the feet in and out towards the block, towards the pelvis, towards the block, towards the pelvis. You feel it in your low back, you grab your shins and pull the feet in. No need to move the block out if that strains your low back. Keep it in close and just squeeze it. Now finally, some people like to add the upper body, whereby you can again take that strap behind your head, squeeze your block, lift your shoulders, and then finally you have the option of moving your block in and out towards the pedestal block and towards the pelvis, towards your pedestal, towards the pelvis. Notice I'm still trying to keep a more neutral position for my head, my face, my neck is more relaxed because it's slung in the loop of the strap. Really the skull is held and the neck can be a little less strained and I can lift my shoulders more or less. Yeah? So the more you lift your shoulders, the more you're engaging rectus abdominis, the more you let the head stay down, the more you're targeting just the deeper abdominals, the adductors, the inner thighs. 
and then we'll breathe and hold for three, two, one. Head comes down, remove the block, stretch the legs long, and take a deep belly breath. Circling the ankles, circling the wrists. All right. We'll gently bend the knees, roll to the side, and come on up. Now for this next one, I like to open up a blanket, because I don't really like the feeling of the mat. It's really hard. It's not very cold today, but it's hard. I'll open up a blanket like so, making a rectangle. Okay, so this is, oftentimes you'll find a blanket stacked like that. I want to open it up into a long rectangle, like so. Place that rectangle on the mat, or on any surface you're working on. And then you lie prone on your front body. Now, the back line, the back body, is in fact part of the core as well, right? So the posterior part of your core, from the low ribs to the top of your pelvis, quadratus lumborum there, and other back muscles, and then you have your um, internal and external obliques on the side body, as well as a little bit of your deep abdominals, yeah? So the core really includes this back part of your trunk as well, never mind the buttocks, which contribute to core strength, and the thighs and hamstrings. So we begin by pressing your pubic bone down. That flattens out the curve of your low back. And that action of pubic bone pressure is steady. We never let that go when we're doing core strengthening on the front body. And we'll float the legs upward, keeping the pubic bone pressing. So you can see that the lift of the legs is somewhat antithetical to the tuck of the tailbone. The legs don't lift as much if we keep the pubic bone pressing. So that's what we want to do. And then we bring your arms, and you have many options with your arms. Today, I'm giving you the option of stretching your arms straight out. You may need to bend the elbows to protect your shoulders, but straight out if it works for you. And as we lift your legs and your arms, then we lift the chest and focus mostly neutrally downward. We just don't want to be lifting the chin like so. Breathe and hold. You can open and close your fists, circle your ankles and your wrists as we do. And then we'll bank to the left, looking right, and bank to the right, looking left. Banking and banking. Two more of these. Bank and bank, and then back to the center. Some people like to take the hands and interlace them behind the back, giving you a little more leverage, and others will feel better if you grab your strap and do that same action, but with your wrists significantly further apart. Breathing and holding, lifting. Big breath in, and then we'll come all the way down. Either stack your palms under your forehead or turn your head to one side, and then swish the buttocks from side to side. You have the option to bend your knees instead of doing the simple buttock swish and do the windshield wipers. Also, if you do turn your head to one side, take a moment to turn it to the other side. And if the second side isn't as comfortable, use your hands to help you. So you spend a little time on the less comfortable side. Take a couple of big breaths here. And come back to the center. Now I'd like to finish in Sphinx Pose. Sphinx Pose just to lengthen the front of your body that we just did a lot of tightening and shortening with. We press the pubic bone down again, okay? Then keeping the pubic bone pressing to protect your back from over arching. Come up onto your elbows. Now if there's any strain in your back with this, even though your pubic bone is really pressing, walk your elbows forward to bring your torso a little lower. You, know, you may need that lower height so your back is not quite so lifted. Others will find that this is fine, maybe even not very strong. That may, may be like a little more intensity. You bring the elbows underneath the shoulders vertically. Yeah? Then you have the option still with the pubic bone pressing, the buttocks engaged. You may even like to lift your elbows. For some, lifting the elbows a little bit, you know you're done. For others, huh, weirdly enough, you can lift a little higher. Pulling your chest forwards and upwards. Imagine stretching the skin from the pubic bone up to your chest. Breathing into your sphinx pose. Pubic bone pressing strongly down. You never want to relax here in case that's going to compress your low back. Pubic bone pressing, pressing, pressing. And then we'll slowly come all the way down. Once again, rest your head. 
bend your knees, and this time try a circle with your shins, around and around. If you do the circle, switch it up. Go the other way. All right. And then finally, we'll push back into a very gentle child's pose of any version that works for you. Classically, buttocks to heels, arms reach forward. You may opt for a block beneath your forehead. Always fine. Big breath into your back ribs, your belly, your side ribs. One more big deep inhale, belly breath. And let it out. And we'll walk the hands in and up. Take any seated position. Namaste.